Hey there, this is the fourth part of the rock modeling techniques tutorial series. So in this part, what we'll be doing is setting up the mesh and exporting it with its LLDs to CryEngine. So first bring in your uh, rock model into inside Maya and give it a Lambit material. Give it a name such as rock underscore big underscore zero four underscore mat. Also, don't forget to name the mesh itself. Assign the diffuse texture, which is located on your CryEngine folder. Now what you need to do is just create a Quiet export node using the uh, MySE tree plugin. If you think that you need to keep in mind about the LODs is that you have to expect a naming convention in order to have it work properly when you export your asset to CryEngine. So if you mess up with the naming convention, the asset won't export properly and the LODs won't show up. So try to respect the naming convention shown up on this document or you can check out the documentation on crydev.net. So what we're going to do here is just duplicate the same mesh and name it properly following the naming convention. In this case, I just duplicated the original mesh and added an underscore LLD1 underscore name of the mesh and then underscore group. Now I'm just gonna run through a decimation filter. I'll just reduce the poly count by 50%. Make sure that the reduction UV influencer is on and same goes for the preserve. And hit apply. This should reduce the poly count by 50%. Now all you have to do is just rebuild the normals, make sure to unlock normals and then soften the edges. That way you can have the same uh, normals, vertex normals, just as the original mesh. We'll repeat the same step again. In this case, instead of using lot one, we'll just name it lot two. Hide the other meshes and repeat the same step. But in this case, we'll just reduce by 30%. Hit apply and rebuild the normals. Clear the history when you're done. Now what we're going to do is create a collision mesh based on the highest LOD. It all depends on the usage of your asset. If your asset is a static mesh, it doesn't really matter, but if it is a dynamic physical mesh you probably want to use a very simplistic collision mesh so what i did here is just duplicated the highest lod and added an underscore fizz to the naming i'll just apply a simple lambert material and name it proxy once you're done add the attributes using the mysc tree plugin select your fizz mesh and go to your material used by the physics mesh and change its attribute to physics not draw. Save your scene. Doesn't matter where you save it, as long as it is saved in order to export the asset. And what we're going to do is quickly organize the materials in the material group editor. So we'll create a group same here, the naming isn't very important, but you might want to name it in something to something that is speaking to you and that can help you organize your assets in the CryEngine. Then just hit on add shaders from selected geometry and it will automatically add the materials used in the Cry export node. And once you're done here, clear the history and validate just to check if there are any problems. Now we're just gonna look where we're going to export the uh, asset in this case it's just going to be in the CryEngine folder custom rocks and we'll name it rock underscore zero four a uh, big zero four so first you need to generate materials and once you've done generating materials just export selected models now what we're going to do is just open up CryEngine
And once you're done opening Coin Engine, you can browse all the way to where in the brush tabs to where your asset is. Now your asset loads up with a material applied to it, but you'll notice that the normal mapping isn't applied because we haven't defined it in Maya. So we're just going to open up the material and material editor and browse our normal map. Now we'll quickly tweak out the specularity on the mesh just to add up a bit of rim lighting. It all depends if you have a spec specular map. In this case, I don't have any uh, in order to save a bit of texture memory. Shadowing casted from the um, from the clouds might be annoying, so I'm just going to turn them off. The effect might be too strong, so I'm just going to tone it down a bit by reducing the specular color value and reducing a bit the glossiness. Once you're happy with the result, you can go ahead and test out the collisions. And we can also check out if the LOD is actually being applied to the mesh. So sometimes you might want to tweak out the LOD ratio value and it all depends also on the size of your mesh. So be careful when you export your model to CryEngine, you have to also keep in mind uh, of the scaling. Since I was using centimeters in Maya, every centimeter is equal, equals one centimeter to in CryEngine. So in order to have one meter, you have to use 100 units in Maya. So in this case, this mesh is fairly small um, compared to the whole environment. That's why I had to scale up the mesh. And the LODs won't really be affecting the, ma the, the mesh properly. So I might need to tweak out the LOD ratio Higher values will give you noticeable results. And as you can see here, you'll see that the transition between the LOD is a bit too fast, so I might want to use lower value. Now to see if the collision is working correctly as well, we'll just go in game mode and try to run over the rock. You notice that there are no types of surface applied to this mesh, to the material. So we're just going to do that quickly in the material editor by simply changing the surface type to rock. Do this for the rock material and the proxy material. That way when you fire on the rock model, it will show the proper uh, particles and sound. In order to have it applied and working properly, you will need to rerun the cry engine, close, save your level and reopen your level and the settings will be applied. All right, thank you for watching.